Hi there, welcome to this learning set. Let's start by going over the learning goals and focus for this lesson. Your first learning goal is that you can analyze how complex characters, um, those with multiple conflicting motivations, develop over the course of the help or the secret life of bees and how they interact with other characters and advance the plot or develop the theme. Your focus questions for this lesson are, how do the conflicts faced by the individual characters continue to develop them in the eyes of the reader? And what has the reader learned about the character through how they work to resolve their conflicts? What larger messages can be learned from the obstacles that the characters overcome? Now, when I like to teach this lesson, I usually focus on characters from the help. Um, and we're looking at the different struggles and conflicts that they're facing to start with. The favorite, uh, my favorite character that I like to model with is Celia. Um, I usually do this table after chapter 18, which is unfortunately the chapter in which Celia suffers from a miscarriage. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do when I'm looking at how these characters are developing is I'm, I'm gonna identify as many conflicts or struggles that they are facing. Um, so Celia, we can even make a bullet point list. Um, in chapter 18, she suffers a miscarriage. This is one of many times that she has tried to have children. With Mr. Johnny, but is unsuccessful. So I find that that is like one of the main conflicts, right? And we're going to talk a little bit about why that means so much to her. Um, she feels that she needs to fit in with the other white women um, that live in Mississippi. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I, -S 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 -I -I. there we are. Um, so that means that she needs to have children. Um, that's one of the expectations that the women have. Skeeter also kind of is confronted with that conflict being a single woman. Um, she's not focused on having a family at this time, but Celia feels that pressure. Um, she knows Sir Johnny wants to have children. And she's afraid that he will leave her if he finds out that she is unable to have children. Um, to go along with this conflict up here, Celia struggles to fit in with the other women. Jackson, because Hilly is actively trying to keep her out. their social circle. So again, Hilly is trying to keep her out of their social circle. Um, yeah, so these are a lot of the main conflicts that Celia is facing at this point in the novel. Um, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to um, talk about what type of conflicts they are. Are they character versus character, character versus society, character versus self? So let's start up here. Um, the miscarriage, uh, unfortunately, this is a character versus self issue, um, you know, she's, that's an expectation that Celia is putting on herself. We haven't actually seen Johnny um, confront her about this uh, in the novel. So um, she's putting a lot of pressure on herself and in doing so, she actually seems to be becoming more, um, more sick-like um, to the point where she's having these miscarriages. Um, this conflict right here, uh, she, fe she feels the need to fit in with these other women. Um, and a lot of that is, you know, she feels this societal pressure because she came from Sugar Ditch, um, which is one of the poorer areas of Mississippi. And so she's trying to meet in with society and is not being very successful. So this is a character versus society kind of issue where she's, she's struggling to fit in with them. Um, 
And this last one, again, you know, she, she knows that Mr. Johnny wants to have children. She's afraid that he's going to leave her. Um, again, I would say that this is more of a character versus self, um, just because, again, we haven't seen Johnny um, actually confront her about this issue. So uh, we have a lot of a lot of different conflicts here, but most of them are character versus self or character versus society. We don't see Celia getting into any real conflicts be between her and uh, single characters in the text, other than maybe Minnie uh, trying to get her <laughs> to be more useful around the house. So uh, we have identified the struggles that Celia is facing at this point in the novel. Again, with the main one being after chapter 18, we find out that she's been having miscarriages. She's been trying to have a family with Johnny in order to try and meet uh, what she thinks his expectation is, as well as uh, meet the expectations of those white women during that time period, um, those societal expectations that they put in place. And then we identify the type of conflict that it is. Um, and now the last piece is, is like, we look at the conflicts and we look at how the characters are being developed through how they handle them. Uh, as Celia is working through these problems, what can we learn about who she is um, as a character. Uh, and I think that there's a couple of things that we can, we can latch on to. Um, I think the first thing that we can identify is that, you know, through these miscarriages, she's been keeping this to herself, um, which I think is really important. And hurting and breathing all by herself. So she's, she's obviously suffering from um, some loneliness and not being able to confide in anyone about, you know, this very personal issue. And again, I think this also connects to the, the second problem that we talked about, how she doesn't fit in with the other women. She doesn't have any of them to confide in. Um, so she's, you know, she's suffering from this loneliness and isolation, um, not only because the women from Jackson, how they treat her, but she feels alone in her own household. I think that that's really important. Um, but I think that we also see that she is one of the happiest, most chipper characters in the novel, right? She continually seems to have this positive attitude in front of many that annoys her. Um, so I think through dealing with these struggles, in isolation, Celia has learned to be resilient and has learned to cope with her emotions on her own. Um, we see that she's a much stronger character than we give her credit for. I think a lot of people, you know, have this, this misinterpretation of who Celia is at the beginning of the novel with her being a Marilyn Monroe-like character that many, you know, does not show much admiration for. And I think it's safe to say that, you know, when we find out that she's been concealing all these very personal struggles, um, you know, that she's had to overcome, you know, growing up in Sugar Ditch and moving into a town where she doesn't know anybody. And she can, she persists in being, you know, and trying to fit in. And I think that that shows that she's really resilient um, and how she's learned to cope um, emotionally and still get back up on her feet every time that, you know, she encounters a new struggle. So I think through dealing with these struggles in isolation, Celia has learned to be resilient. She's learned to cope with her emotions on her own. Um, and she is a much stronger, more independent woman than the reader initially gives her credit for. She grew up from nothing. sugar ditch and has had to be persistent in trying to assimilate to a different social class, different way of life, and societal expectations.
in Jackson. So hopefully this gives you an idea of um, all the, the different ways that you can examine, you know, character development and how we look at conflict and how um, through the characters trying to resolve those conflicts, uh, we see how they're growing. And I think that this can lead us towards a bigger message, um, you know, that, uh, Maybe, you know, Stockett is trying to suggest that there is more to women's individual struggles beneath what they reveal on the surface. Um, I hate the, the expression of don't judge a book by its cover, but I think that she is trying to get at, you know, each woman's, each woman's struggle in this novel is so um, individual and personal. And I think that so many of them, like Minnie is so quick to judge Celia, but after this chapter, she really comes to realize like, oh, there's so much I did not realize. Um, and I think that that's really important. So each woman's struggle to, in this novel is so individual and personal that they really have no room to pass judgment on one another. And Stockett is trying to get readers to realize that each woman needs to be uh, understood from a place of empathy. I think that that's the more important piece is that when we look at these conflicts, how, how is Stockett trying to get us to realize that there's so much more to the greater, the greater message of the novel through how the conflict is being resolved. So um, again, just to review, you know, we looked at these, these focus questions of how do the conflicts lead to uh, these individual characters to develop through the eyes of the reader? What has the reader learned about the character through how they resolve their, uh, sorry, their work? Um, how does the character, you know, resolve these conflicts? Um, and then what larger messages can be learned from the obstacles um, that these characters overcome? So again, we're looking at, you know, how these characters are developing over the course of the novel and how that advances the plot and develop the themes. Um, hopefully that process made sense of using that table. And now you're going to go use the same process to uh, wrap up your sections of uh, The Help or The Secret Life of Bees. Thanks for watching.